All right. So I would like to show you an example of how to solve a triangle. Given just information. So here is a triangle, which is number 20 and 8.2. Nice. This does not sound like a triangle. This is A equals 5, degrees. capital C equals 9, degrees. degrees, and little c equals 3. So that's an so angle, angle sign. So what they're, what they're doing, right, is they're taking an arbitrary triangle with sides, what? A, B, C. Sure. A, B, and C somehow. Yeah. And angles... Which angle is across from angle or side A? A. And angle B is across from side B and side or angle C is across from side C. Angle A is five degrees. Okay, and then they told me angle A is five degrees. Please do not try to draw your triangle to scale. Yeah, that's crazy talk. Anyway, that's crazy. It is crazy. Right. Talk. While you're five degrees. While you're thinking, don't draw the triangle to scale because you won't have space to write in it when the angles get dorked. Okay. Cool. Okay. So five degrees over there, nine degrees over here. And then angle C is 180 degrees. And side C is three. So this is what I know right now. Yeah. This is what I encourage your first step to be. Yeah. You might, off in the margin, try to sketch just quick when you start a kind of scale version. Really angle. So 5 degrees is an extremely small angle. Mm -hmm. Another extremely small angle. And then I don't know side B, but I know this one's 3. So 3, 5 degrees. And then I don't know how far this is, right? We know that one angle is really small. But then I know the angle on the other side of it is extremely small. Oops, but bigger than that one. You guys see why I'm kind of encouraging you not to draw a scale picture? Yeah. Because this triangle is going to be like really, really long and skinny. Right? Sliver. So, you could do something like this. What do I expect this angle to be? Uh, really big, right? 160. Okay. So, how did you get angle B, Levi? <laughs> took 180 and subtracted 14. Took 180 and subtracted 14, so you found 166 degrees. 176. 176 would be 180 minus 4. You're right on that. This is the common core method, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. What? Yeah. So, the common core method is just. I'm trying to figure out how to subtract 14 from 180. Why you, why so I thought about 180 minus 14. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the common core they subtract. Oh, do we do 180 minus 14? Yeah. 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 Because you carry a calculator in your pocket. Oh, that's that's true. That, that's definitely accurate. You carry a calculator in your pocket, so I care less about your accuracy. I care more about your knowing when to do this. Yeah. So we teach you kind of funny methods to conceptualize because then you know why to add. You're slower. Right? Like if I teach you to add this way, it's slower. But you carry a calculator in your pocket. If you want to be fast, get the calculator out. Just subtract ten and then. Sure. Or subtract yeah. 10 and then subtract 4 or from that. I subtract 10 and then yeah. subtract 5 and then add 1. Sure. That's yeah. also reasonable. <laughs> That's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Point yeah. is. It's hard to do, yeah. Anyway. Point is. Yeah. Now what? Uh, I don't know. We have lost sign. We can do sign 9 over 3 equals. Okay. We can do the law of sign. Um, when you're doing these. Be careful with the law of sines if one of the angles is near 90 degrees. Right? Because that's that ang that there's a possibility that you're in that angle side side case. Does that make sense? And it could be almost tangent. 
Right? There could be two triangles that are just very slightly different from each other. Uh, okay. Right? Just basically be afraid when you have to take the sine inverse of something if you don't know where that's going to live. Like in this case, my angles are all well away from 90. So when I take the sine inverse of something, it's going to be something. Well, I'm not going to have to take a sine inverse here because I know all the sine. Uh, I know all the angles. But if I'm trying to find the, an angle with law of sines, I should be scared when I take the sine inverse. So the sine inverse of those would be something like a thing. Yeah, if at all possible, if you're looking for an angle, use the law of cosines instead of the law of sines. Okay. So with here, yeah, write down the law of sines. So the law of sines says what? Which one do you want to find first? That's an A. So I, I'm going to use the 3 that I know, right? So I'm going to use definitely 3 over sine of 9 degrees. It's fine, I Is it true that you should first use the given values, not the ones you found, just for accuracy? No. I probably would if I would, yeah. If I cared about the accuracy of the answer. Yeah. If you're good. rounding stuff, yeah, it's better to use the more precise ones that you're given. I just want to throw things at each other. It's when they were choosing as the two sides. Uh, okay, that's, that's a fair point. So Ryan, I'm sorry. Uh, so B over 166. B like, over. Uh, sine of 166. Sine of 166. Don't forget the sine. Totally not. I just, I just identified the identity of this variable. Okay, so in exact numbers, B is what? Uh, that, that's what? Uh, three. Yes. Three over sine. In exact yeah. numbers, B is sine of 166 uh, times three. Times three three sine of 166 over yeah. sine of nine degrees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. You so may round this, this using a calculator, but please tell me when you do such okay. things. Okay. okay. That's the exact answer. That's what I would like to see. Uh, how about A? What's A then? So are you like cross multiplying pretty much when you do that? I multiply both sides by sine of 166. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on the other one here, I have 3 over sine of 9 is A over sine of 5. And so I get A is. 3 sine of 5 degrees over sine of 9 degrees. Okay. Question. Ballpark wise, how do you expect A and B to compare in size? A is going to be small. A is going to be small. B is going to be very I feel like, yeah, probably A is going to be relatively yeah. close to three. Yeah, sounds good. And it's like double. B will be way bigger. Yeah, like double. Yeah, like probably pretty close to three plus whatever you get over there. Yeah, almost. Well, 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 you guys see that? that? Like it's 166 degrees, so it's pretty open, yeah. right? So this as a shortcut is not very much shorter than the long one. Right. You guys see that? So why am I asking you that? Somebody uh, give me approximations for this. So what'd you get? You got B is approximately. B is approximately. Four point six. So this one? Yeah. Hang on. No, I didn't get my questions right. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. Divide by. Four point six three nine. Yeah. This one? Yeah. yeah. So four point six four. Okay, what did you get for this one? Isn't that just B A? Hold on. Oh, yeah. That should be enough. Yeah. Um, one point six seven. One point six seven one. Yeah. Okay. Quick, flip your calculator to radians instead of degrees. And then it puts these. They're negative. Mm -hmm. One of them is negative? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. one of them's negative. Uh, one, of them ne one of them's negative, which is a big clue that you're wrong, right? And the uh, which one's the other one? 3.5. Which one? Uh, the first one. Yeah, so this one's like 3.5 and this one's negative? Yeah. Negative 6.9. Okay, so another possible error that you could make is what? You forget the negative. Your calculator opens a parenthesis here, and you forget to close it. No, yeah, I closed. Right, so if you know a way to ballpark these just a little bit, right, it doesn't have to be good. Like, obviously, I was wrong about this being basically three, right? But ballparking just a little bit gives you that check of, like, okay, that's a reasonable number. I didn't make a calculator error. I'm in the right mode. Life is good. Cool? All right, that's what I want you guys to have for solving triangles.